Well, joining us live from New York is Mike Bacco. He is the sports editor of Daily National. Mike, welcome. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about the opening ceremony. Some three billion people around the world will be watching. What will be some of the highlights? Our reporter Stephen Gibbs is hearing that they will be less opulent from mm. London and Beijing. It's, it's going to be very tough to top the opulence of what went on in Beijing, certainly with the amount of people that were involved in the choreography. And then when you look about 2012, filmmaker Danny Boyle had his fingerprints all over that uh, opening ceremony. Very cinematic, very theatrical. When you look at who is in charge this year, he's the former director of the film that glamorized the slums of Rio called City of God. So I wonder what his bent and what his spin will be on it. Certainly, there'll be a lot of music, a lot of color, a lot of just embracing of the Rio and the Brazilian traditions. So who do you think will light the Olympic cauldron? It certainly will not be football legend Pele. He bowed out because he's not feeling well. Yeah, that was the moment that everyone was waiting for and expecting. Thinking back to the U.S. Olympics of 1996 in Atlanta, the famous moment of uh, now deceased boxer Muhammad Ali lighting the Olympic torch, that's what everyone was gearing up for and that's what everyone was expecting with Pelé. But now with this last minute substitution, there's really no one of that stature that they could have that has that gravitas, that, that historical significance and that sporting significance to match up. So no matter who they find, they're, they're going to have to find someone, it's going to pale in comparison to Pelé. Oh, what about um, what a lot of people are saying, that the opening ceremony is actually the first true test of preparedness in these games? Do you agree? I think it's obvious that it's the first test of preparedness. You know, you look at the security enforcements that are there, the police that are there. This is going to probably be the most heavily attended and scrutinized event that's going on. In one of your previous reports, talking about how there are thousands, even millions of tickets that are left unsold. So this stadium is going to be jam-packed. It's going to be reminiscent to opening ceremonies or opening games of the World Cup from a few years ago. So this is where the, the world spotlight is going to be on these Olympics. And quite frankly, this is where all of the efforts are going for these uh, opening stages of the Olympic Games. So all the security will be on heightened alert, all the choreography, everything going on to bring in these 80,000 spectators. And like you mentioned, millions and billions around the world. And a remarkable first. We're going to have a team, a refugee team, for the first time taking part in these games. Yeah, I mean, th this Olympics, for as much as it has been scrutinized, uh, analyzed for the Zika virus, for displacing citizens from the favelas and all the political corruption and over budgeting, this is really going to be a, a historic Olympics. You know, they're taking doping so much more seriously. You mentioned the refugee team. So this is truly what the Olympic spirit is about. I mean, it's so corrupted now by some of the back end dealings and there are billions of dollars at stake. But when you look at a team like the refugee refugee team. That's what the Olympic spirit is all about. So you mentioned some of the challenges, you know, Brazil's economic problems, political problems, Zika. Do you think the next few weeks will actually go off without a hitch? You certainly hope so. We, we don't want to be sitting here. We want to be talking about the athletes, the stories, the triumphs, the tragedies. We don't want to be talking about civil unrest. We don't want to be talking about things that are going on the, in the Olympic Village. God forbid something from a terrorist uh, perspective. So I think so much scrutiny is being paid to these Olympics. We had these fears in 2014 in Sochi. They were unprepared. Those Olympics went off completely fine. Same terrorist fears in 2012 in London. They went off without a hitch. So you're hoping that tradition follows with what's been going on with the last few summer and winter Olympics. All right. We'll keep hoping. Mike Bacco, thank you so much. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.